Welcome ladies and gents, my name is Rick Hersey and this is the review for Alien Isolation. Most people were hugely disappointed that Aliens Colonial Marines. It was because of how bad that game was that I had some concerns going into Alien Isolation. This Alien game, however, was a success. When using a license for a game, it is important that the developers actually know the source material. From my experience with Isolation, it felt like all the developers were hardcore fans of the Alien franchise. They just got it. From the atmosphere to the alien itself, isolation was scary and tense in all the right ways. You play as Amanda Ripley, daughter of Ellen Ripley from the movies, who is looking for her mother who went missing after the events of the first movie. When word of her mother comes up, she sets out to Sevastopol Station, but later discovers that the station is actually the hunting grounds of a killer. I wasn't a huge fan of the voice acting in this game, but I really enjoyed Ripley's voice actress. She was able to capture the tense moments really well. In fact, I found out that most of the things about Ripley I liked. She is an engineer, which Ripley. also means that she is smart. She knows how to create tools, fix equipment, and is also not defenseless like most protagonists in horror games. Her resourcefulness and ability to use weapons really made her feel capable. And also, in true horror fashion, ammo is scarce. Using components found around the station, Ripley can craft together many useful tools like med packs, noisemakers, EMPs, molotovs, etc. The game looks really good. The lighting and the setting works so well together and the alien was the greatest looking thing of all. I wasn't particularly thrilled with the human characters however, both in and out of cutscenes. The lip syncing is almost non-existing during the actual game and with cutscenes I felt that it was a bit lacking. I was also a little bit annoyed at the way some cutscenes had frames of black within their cuts. As a video editor, that got annoying very quickly. But I really loved how much the developers stayed true to the franchise, with technology exactly as it was depicted in the films. From monitors with horrible quality, loud keyboards, and big clunky equipment, you really felt like you were in that universe. The game setting feels a lot like Dead Space, but it plays a lot like Outlast, where there are some scripted jump scares and tense moments, but the enemies are mostly unpredictable. In fact, very rarely was there a scripted jump scare. Almost every time I got scared was because the game was in an unscripted area. You could argue that the game would have benefited from the scripted jump scares in certain sections, but in my opinion, isolation never takes away the threat, which is the scariest thing about the game. Once the game actually starts firing on all cylinders and really gets going, the alien is an ever-present danger. This was something I totally loved. As you play through, you will acquire different tools and equipment that will help you navigate the station. One of these tools is the classic motion tracker. You'll notice that when using it, there will be a blip that will inform you that something is near and moving. Usually, this is the alien moving through the ventilation. There are sections in the game that you can sneak through quietly and not encounter the alien at all, but make it loud noise and it will be in play. You are always being hunted and hiding is only a temporary solution. The xenomorph has heightened senses and at times can see you under a table, in a locker, or even in the vents. It can even hear the beeping of the motion tracker. Thanks to this game, the xenomorph has finally become one of the most formidable threats in gaming. In addition to nowhere ever really being safe, you cannot kill the alien. Fire all the bullets you want, it will just keep coming. Eventually, you will acquire a flamethrower and molotovs that you can use to drive it away, but like hiding, this is also a temporary solution. You may have made your foe retreat into the vents for a time, but it will be back. It's mainly what makes this game so good. The alien, the star of the show, is cunning, vicious, and terrifying. The developers captured this so well with isolation. But the Xenomorph isn't the only threat in this game. There are other humans on the station that will pose a threat to Ripley. I really like the AI for them as well. These humans are just trying to survive and as a result will threaten Ripley before actually attacking her. They're scared and it actually feels like it because they aren't safe either. The alien will attack other humans and what's really cool is how this can be used as a strategy. You can throw a noisemaker into a room filled with human enemies which the alien will hear and investigate. When it encounters the humans, it will slaughter them and clear the room for you to pass through without too much issue. This strategy is most certainly a risky one considering that you eliminate a threat but attract the biggest threat as you now have to deal with the alien being in play. There are also androids which have a really creepy design. Some of the biggest scares in the game was because of these synthetics. They aren't easy to bring down and can do a lot of damage if you're not careful. While it is wise to avoid these guys, they aren't the alien. They can be killed, but this might have to be done loudly, which will attract the alien. Everything you do in this game is a carefully calculated risk. You are never safe, and it is always one threat or another. While sneaking is the best option, sometimes there isn't an option. You will be constantly on the move to your next save point and constantly on edge wondering what threats await you. The game isn't perfect, however. Aside from the bad lip syncing and annoying cutscenes, the story was a little lacking. 
In many ways, the game is like Outlast or Dead Space. You arrive at a place with an objective, and when things get out of hand, the objective is just to escape. It wasn't a bad story. Each new objective gave me a reason to keep going forward, but Isolation won't be winning awards for its story. Another thing about Isolation is the survivor mode. This has a degree of replayability to the game as you are thrown into a map and given three optional objectives. The thing about survivor mode is that each optional objective has its own time limit attached to it, and your waypoint only points to the exit of the level, that can honestly be reached in about less than 3 minutes. The first few times you play this mode, you'll be frantically searching the area for your optional objectives, but once you know where everything is, you'll be planning your path forward, and after a couple of failures, your final run will probably still clock in around 3 minutes. I feel like this mode could have used a bit more love, and also more than just one level, maybe if completing each optional objective unlocked another map. More is likely to come with future DLC, but for now, it just kind of leaves me wanting more. Alien Isolation is fantastic, and fans of the movies will love it. It has awesome mechanics, formidable enemies, and puts it all in a well-designed and beautiful setting. The game isn't perfect, but it doesn't take away from what matters. The gameplay was spot on, and captured the Xenomorph so perfectly. I couldn't get enough of this game, and I loved my time playing it. Alien Isolation is, in my opinion, one of the best games this year so far. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.